Do you want to tell a romantic courtship story such as Pride and Prejudice or Brokeback Mountain? Or perhaps you adore a marriage story like Kramer vs. Kramer of the War of the Roses? Or maybe you're consumed by tales of obsession such as Romeo and Juliet or The Great Gatsby. Now, what do all of these stories have in common? They're all part of the love genre. And in this video, I'm going to guide you through the must-have components that go into every story in the love genre. And I'm Ryan McRae. I'm a writer and student at StoryGrid University. And everything in this video and all StoryGrid training is based on the methodology and instruction developed by Sean Coyne, an editor and a storyteller with over 30 years of experience. Okay, so let's start with the underlying question. In every love story, how do we navigate the emotional minefield that's love? And how can we attract a mate, avoid heartbreak, and maintain a lasting relationship through a lifetime? A love story is all about watching the lovers move through the obstacles in the way of their relationship in order to come together with commitment and intimacy. Now let's look at the love story through the story grid tool, the four core framework. Now, number one, the core need of the love story is connection. The protagonist yearns for connection, intimacy, and the assurance that another human being sees and knows them. This connection awakens during the lover's meet scene. Romantic love requires more vulnerability and risk and a broader commitment than other relationships. This kind of love includes sexual desire, but also asks that we grow and become better versions of ourselves so we can form a tighter bond with our lover. And number two, the core value of the love story is all about love and hate. The love genre comes from the need for connection, which spans a spectrum of love and hate. And the negative points on the spectrum go beyond hate to indifference and hate that masquerades as love. And the positive aspects of the love spectrum go in three different directions, depending on the subgenre of the love story, which we'll get to shortly. Now, the controlling idea or theme of a love story is... Love triumphs when lovers overcome moral failings or sacrifice their needs for one another. Or love fails when the lovers don't evolve beyond desire. And number three, the core emotion of the love story is romance. When the lovers sacrifice selflessly without hope that it will do them any good, the reader feels the core emotion of romance. If the protagonist can find authentic connection, it means perhaps the reader can too. And love stories allow the readers to feel the romance without the risk. And finally, number four, the core event of the love story is the proof of love. The climax of the love genre is the proof of love scene, the most powerful moment in the story because it's when the readers feel the love for themselves. It proves the power of love between two people is exponentially stronger than the power of one. Now let's take a look at the conventions and obligatory moments of a love story. And just as a quick reminder, Conventions are what the audience expects of the world, characters, and circumstances in our story. They're what set up the obligatory moments and payoffs of our love story. Without these, the audience will be confused and lost from the get-go. In a love story, we have eight conventions. We have a love triangle. There must be a triangle of relationships that includes a rival. In courtship stories, the rival is the third wheel character who is involved with one of the lovers. The rival might also be a personal ethic, such as this person is great, but is morally corrupt, so I can't be with them. This shows up in another convention, opposing forces, which I'll get to shortly. We have helpers and harmers. There must be characters that act for and against their relationship. Those in favor of the match help out, and those opposed to it will do everything to destroy it. The lovers must have opposite ordered and chaotic approaches to love and life. However, as they integrate as a couple, their, their opposite approaches become a balanced whole that's greater than the sum of its parts. There must be an external need, something outside the romance that's driving the actions of the main characters, and there must be opposing forces to the match. These may be beyond the character's control, such as social rules, family values, or the forces may be in the character's control, such as bad habits, religious beliefs. Now let's talk about secrets. There are secrets in every love story, and there's four different types of secrets. So our first secret, our secret society keeps from the couple, such as the lovers discover they're related. The second one is that secrets the couple keeps from society, such as they don't tell their friends and family about the relationship. The third one is that secrets the couple keeps from one another, such as the rival, past or present sins. And then number four, the secrets the lovers keep from themselves. Maybe the character has a flaw that prevents intimacy, such as Darcy's pride or Elizabeth's prejudice and pride and prejudice. All right, back to conventions. We're on number seven. The lovers develop rituals of intimacy, such as shared traditions, private language, and inside jokes. And these love stories have moral weight. 
Those who cannot fall in love have some moral failing. In order for them to live happily ever after, they have to overcome the moral failing by the story's end. Now, those are the conventions, but what about obligatory moments? And as a reminder, obligatory moments are the must-have events, revelations, decisions, or actions that pay off raised expectations of the conventions. The love story has six obligatory moments. The lovers meet. The lovers must become aware of one another in order to connect and commit or not. Intimate connection. The lovers must acknowledge that they care for or are attracted to one another. This could be anything from a private moment shared, to a first kiss, to a first time hookup. Confessions of love. One lover becomes vulnerable by expressing the depths of their feeling to the other lover. And then the lovers break up. Something forces the lovers apart, willingly or not. We have proof of love. The lovers must sacrifice for one another without the promise that it will do them any good. Then we have lovers reunite. The lovers must come back together again to commit to one another or not. Either way, the decision has to be shown. And finally, you can break down the love genre into three subgenres based on the protagonist domain. We have obsession, and the psychological driver for the protagonist is desire. In the obsession love story, one of the lovers has such a shallow but intoxicating passion for the other that the life death value comes into play. Obsession love stories are cautionary. They don't progress beyond the desire value and usually end up in tragedy. Examples include The Great Gatsby and Romeo and Juliet. We have courtship, and the psychological driver for that is commitment. This is the bread and butter of love story. Courtship concerns all the romantic rituals we go through in order to find a mate, and typically ends in happily ever after, with commitment and with intimacy ensured. The courtship love story is prescriptive, like Pride and Prejudice, Brokeback Mountain, and An Affair to Remember. And then we have marriage, and the psychological driver for the protagonist is intimacy. The marriage story concerns a committed relationship that certainly had early stages of passion and is now at a crossroads. This story takes love into realistic realms and may have a negative inciting incident such as betrayal. There's an ironic win but lose, lose but win ending. The marriage love story may either be prescriptive or cautionary. And examples would be Marriage Story and Kramer vs. Kramer. These love stories give us prescriptive and cautionary tales to navigate love's minefield. And the story will slide between love and hate until the proof of love scene that leads to the final decision the lovers have to make. Now, if you wanted some homework to keep learning more, we recommend watching your favorite love story movie or reading your favorite book to see if you can identify all the conventions and obligatory moments. This will help you see how other great writers have put this into practice. And also take the time right now to put your favorite love story book or movie down in the comments and identify which subgenre it is. To learn more about StoryGrid, we recommend subscribing to our YouTube channel and visiting storygrid.com to subscribe to our email newsletter. Thanks for watching. I've been Ryan McRae, a student and writer at StoryGrid University. Bye.